Hello, what is up guys? It's Evil Duos Arm here today, back with another Blade and Soul video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at five lesser known tips and tricks that people that are new to the game, or even some experienced ones, may not know about in the game. These are some things that I wish I knew about way sooner in the game than I did. I've been playing for two years, and I actually just found out about some of these like really recently in the last month. So anyway, I want to make sure that I share these with you so that you have them while you're playing through the game to help make your gameplay experience that much better. And real quick, before we begin, if you do find something on this video that you didn't know before, make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a like so that I know. And if you didn't gain anything from this, well then, you know, keep that to yourself. Jerk. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So the first tip we're going to look at today is probably one of the most useful ones, and it was dropped to me in my comment section of the video a few days ago, and I didn't even know about this one, but it is that the Hongmoon coins on the NA and EU servers are shared. So what does that mean? So if you go to the Daily Dash option down here on the menu, Daily Dash in the bottom right corner, you will see that there's various points where you can get Hongmoon coins. You have the Venture token, which you can trade in for Hongmoon coins. So if you hit that Venture token, it gives you a Venture token, and then you redeem that Venture token for Hongmoon coins. So if you redeem that Venture token for Hongmoon coins on your EU account, your NA account is also going to get those Hongmoon coins. How do we know that? How can I prove it? Well, if I go ahead and log into my EU account, and we look at my EU character's inventory, you will see that I have 105 Hongmoon coins. And if I hop back over to my NA character, you will see that I am sitting at 105 Hongmoon coins. So now that's obviously requiring a lot of trust on your part that I actually switched to an EU account and all of that good stuff. But I did, I promise you can look at the person's name in the bottom left corner and see the character's names on the EU server. So what this means is that any Hongmoon coins you pick up on the EU server or the NA server if you're on the EU server, uh, translates between the two servers. Basically, they are shared between the two servers. So if you do the daily dash on the server that you don't play on, whichever one that is, and you hit a venture token and exchange that for Hongmoon coins, you can go ahead and get bonus Hongmoon coins on the server that you do play on. So if you have the patience, log on to the opposite server every day, spin your daily dash, and hopefully you hit a venture token. Our second tip is in Mushin's Tower, and if you did watch my last video, you saw this one already, so I do apologize for the duplicate, but it is such a great thing that I really got to point it out for new players or people that didn't watch that other video. And that is the door to the left in Mushin's Tower. So if you've never been to Mushin's Tower, it's located right here on the map, Mushin's Hall, Mushin's Tower, this is the location. You're heading over to this door with the two fireplaces up here. And when you get up here, you normally go to the right to do Tower of Infinity. However, if you go through the door to the left, you will arrive in the Trial Arena. The Trial Arena lets you practice sort of like a pseudo PvP against all the different classes, which is cool, but the real thing you're here for are these rewards you get for completing each of the classes 10 times. These rewards range from anything from like Naryu Silver, which has really no use in the game, or you could pick up things like Soul Stones, which you can sell on for gold or use to upgrade your character, and you can get items, the tokens that you need to redeem your badge, your soul badge for your character, your very first soul badge. So this is a great place as a new player or even an experienced player to come and pick up some items that you can sell on for some gold or to get that new soul badge, which is like best in slot for a whole bunch of different classes. It's really simple. All you do is pick who you want to fight. It shows you what rewards you're going to get for doing them. You click on them and you hit start and you're just going to go ahead and run up and fight them. Yeah, it's super easy. LOL. Anyway, it's really easy, I just suck at this game really badly, but once you complete it, you get the items that you see here, and you can go to the next stage, make sure to claim your reward with the claim reward option right here. So the tokens that you're going to get for completing the trial arena are used right down the staircase over here, so if you head on down the stairs and talk to this dude right here, the tokens that you get are the ones that are for the Liberty and Songbird soul badges, which I said are really strong soul badges for a lot of different classes. But yeah guys, that is the Trial Arena, and you definitely should be doing this if you haven't already. One more thing about it, it resets at the start of the next season, so at the time of this video, that is September of 2019, and then it's every six months after that is a new season. So every six months that area resets, and you can go back and farm it again. Our next tip, we're just going to stay in Mushin's Tower, but you can really do this at any of the different vaults or marketplace vendors anywhere in the world. And that is going to be the trade tax that is applied in Blade and Soul. So if you go to the marketplace and try to list anything on the marketplace, if you've ever listed anything on the marketplace, you'll know that there's this registration fee that pops up here when you go to sell something. Now this registration fee, so let's just say I wanted to list these up for four gold. This registration fee varies depending on how many you put in your bundle. So for example, if you put up one to five in a bundle, you're only going to get charged 2% of the total final sale price. However, if you put up 10, you're going to get charged 3%. So what this means is that you can maximize your profits off of what you're selling by reducing the quantity that you sell. 
Now, bear in mind that if you're a free-to-play player, you are limited to 10 sales per day. You can see how many you have left up here. So if you're trying to maximize your amount of money you make per day, you want to list in smaller bundles. If you need a big burst right away, try and break it up so that you don't go over your 10, but still get all of the items sold that you want to sell. It's a nice way to make sure that you're not wasting money. And a great example of this is at the 250 breakpoint. So if you had like 250 sacred orbs that you were trying to sell in the marketplace, if you sold them in a bundle of 250, you would get charged 10% of the value. If you tried to sell it in 251, you would get charged 15% of that value. So it makes a lot more sense to go ahead and just do the 250 and then put the one up separately to make a lot more money to save 5% of that total sale. 5% off of that is a huge amount of money. So you really want to be aware of this when you go to apply and sell different items on the marketplace. If you're ever curious, you can just hover over the little question marks so you know where the breakpoints are. Our next tip applies to people who are leveling, and this is one that I always point out on streams and people are like, what? That's awesome! And yes, it was also in my previous lesser known tips video, but it is such a useful one that I have to list it again. So while you're running, you see your stamina bar drains. If your stamina bar drains and runs out and you want to be able to sprint again, but don't want to have to wait for the bar to fill up, if you go to the top where you see this little channel icon and switch to a channel that you're not in at the moment, when you switch channels, your stamina bar will be fully reset. This is amazing for leveling to be able to cross long distances faster and ultimately progress your alt or your first character a little bit faster. The next tip and our last tip on our list is going to be how to rearrange your HUD so that you can put all of your status bars and icons where you want them. If you press shift on the keyboard and then press F1, it'll bring up this user interface. This user interface is kind of confusing, but really not too bad once you look at it. And if you've played the game for a little while, you'll kind of know what all these different things are anyway. But you can drag and drop and move anything you want anywhere. So for example, if I wanted my health bars to be located like over here, and I hit confirm, now that bar is located over there on my HUD. So you can move these wherever you want. If you're used to a game where all of your status bars are in the top left corner, or if you want your map to be in the bottom right, or all sorts of different things, you can move these stuff anywhere you want to kind of customize your HUD and make it more personable for you. Now these videos always have a little bonus one, and this one's pretty lame, but hey, let's give you a little bonus one. If you press F3 on the keyboard, it brings up the wardrobe. From the wardrobe, you can store any of your outfits that you've obtained in-game inside of this wardrobe. That way, you don't have to have it take up inventory space. This was a feature that was added like eight or nine months ago to free-to-play players. Previously, only members had it. So really a cool little system. If you're not taking advantage of this, make sure you take advantage of it. All you gotta do is click on the item and then hit add to your inventory right here and it moves it back into your inventory. If you wanna put it back inside of the showroom, go ahead and right click on it and it drops it back into the showroom. So a great way to manage your outfit inventory. Anyway guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you did get a new tip from this video, if you found out something you didn't know before, make sure to leave a like, make sure you're subscribed so you stay updated when new content comes out and make sure to let me know how this video helped you in the comments below. If you think I missed something or if you've got a really cool one you want to share with other people, also leave that in the comment section below. That would be awesome. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you at the next video, stream, or wherever I happen to see you. Have a good day. Peace.